All right, folks, chapter 63, going to hit the record button. Going to get the focus on the Kindle app. Yeah. Welcome. Hopefully this is, well, this is the last of the day, the last, the last of the week, this week's invoice at least. So great. Um, any questions, just reach out and, uh, yeah, ask me, I suppose. 63. Prophet, priest, and king. The office or calling of Adam was to serve God as prophet, priest, and king as God's, quote, friend, servant, end quote, as Huck's. I'm going to look that up, but I'm going to pause. Mm, should I pause the video? Probably. I'm not going to. Okay, so here we go. Let's look up how to pronounce Duke Smith. I've done it before. Let's have a look. Kirk. Kirk. Is that right, Huxima? You tell me. Uh, H-O-E-K-S. Okay, Dutch. Huxima. Huxima. Uxima. Try that on for size. All right. Uxima. 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 Friend, servant, end quote, as Uxima pointed out so clearly, these three, quote, are not three separate offices, but rather different aspects or functions of the one office, end quote, Adam was called to be the servant of the Lord and king over creation. As the office bearer of God, God's image bearer and representative in creation, Adam, quote, from the viewpoint of his intellectual life, was prophet of God, from the viewpoint of his volitional life, he was priest, and from the viewpoint of his active life in relation to the world, he was king under God, end quote. Through sin, however, the office bearer of God became a rebel. He became the office bearer of the devil. From the viewpoint of all three aspects of his office, those of prophet, priest and king, he was subverted into the very opposite of the position in which God originally created him. He became the friend, servant of the devil and loved the lie. He was priest of the devil and consecrated himself in enmity against God to the service of sin and iniquity. And he was king under Satan, and the latter became prince of this world through him. End quote. The role of man as prophet was an intellectual one, a calling to interpret the world in terms of the law word of God, and to apply that law of God to the development of the world. Man was required to live by the law of God, which is in Bacabo. Man was required to live by the law of God, which is part of all creation, in that man and the world are created in the context of God's law, and with that law in every atom of all creation. Man cannot be truly himself unless he obeys the law of God, nor can the world around man thrive unless it is fully governed in terms of God's law. Man, by his fall, rejected true knowledge and created not only a false concept of knowledge, but also an anti-theistic idea of law. Creation is inseparably set in the context of God's law. Fallen man seeks to act as a false prophet and to set creation in the context of brute factuality, in isolation from God and his law. Man, as a false prophet, proclaims a lie, and as Huxima declared, quote, in the world and throughout history, there is a development of the lie in the direction of the 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 In the world and throughout history, there is a development of the lie in the direction of and culminating in the false prophet that is pictured to us in the book of Revelation. End quote. The priestly office of Adam was a calling to dedicate the world of God. 
to consecrate himself and all reality to the living God, instead of all things being profane, outside the temple or outside God, all things having been created by God are by nature holy or sacred and must be used and seen only in terms of God's holy purpose. As St. Paul declares, quote, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Titus 1.19 Man, as a false priest, insists on seeing all things as profane outside God, or, if he talks of the sacred, it is a false holiness. He ascribes an innate holiness to all things apart from God. The anti-Christian idea of holiness is a reversal of all biblical norms. Thus, in Howell, Allen Ginsberg sees the profanity of the world as a judging law of God. For him, the world is desacralized and desecrated. Hey, wait, 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 wait. For him, the world is desacralized and desecrated because marijuana and homosexuality are condemned, because certain practices are regarded as perversions and as evil. God and his law are seen as, quote, Moloch, the heavy judger of man, end quote, because this, quote, Moloch entered my soul early, end quote, Ginsberg feels that his life was long clouded, and he was, quote, a consciousness without a body, frightened out of my natural ecstasy, end quote, as a result, Ginsberg renounced God to declare. As a result, Ginsberg renounced God to declare in footnote to Hall. Footnote in Hall. Renounce God to declare footnote in Hall the total and absolute holiness of fallen man man as he is in his sins and unbelief. This is Ginsberg's idea of true reformation and true holiness. And in terms of this, quote, America, I'm putting my queer shoulder to the wheel, end quote. To divorce the idea of the holy from God and his law is to assert profanity as holiness. And this modern man is insistent on doing. True priesthood works to reconsecrate every area of life to the living God and to see every area as a sphere of holiness. As king under God, Adam was called to rule over the world in terms of God's law and to develop all things to their full potentiality under God, a task in which the priestly and prophetic functions unite with the royal. God created the world as his kingdom and the glory of that creation was to be developed by man in this threefold office. Man, however, has by his fall rejected his calling under God in favour of a satanic concept of kingship. Man seeks to be his own God and to assert an independent kingdom, one in which all things serve man, not God, and in which all things are interpreted in terms of man's imagination rather than God's word. The result is a kingdom at war with God and at war against the people of God. Jesus Christ came as the second Adam to re-establish his newly created humanity in this threefold office under God. By his regenerating power, Jesus Christ creates a new humanity. By his atoning death and by his resurrection, he justifies his people before God and removes them from the realm of sin and death into life and righteousness because Jesus Christ is, quote, very God of very God, end quote, and, quote, very man of very man, end quote, as prophet, he is able to express the mind of God as no prophet before him could. By his government of the world as king, and by his indwelling spirit in the church, he continues to speak for God to the world, bringing to light more and more the wisdom and light of his word. The Westminster Shorter Catechism declares that, quote, Christ executed the office of a prophet in revealing to us, by his word and spirit, the will of God for our salvation. <clears throat> salvation. End quote. Answer 24. 
Van Til states, quote, Now, if we recall that man set for himself a false ideal of knowledge when he became a sinner, that is, he lost true wisdom, we may say that in Christ man was reinstalled Kedabado. Kedabado. We may say that in Christ man was reinstated to true knowledge. In Christ man realizes that he is a creature of God and that he cannot seek for comprehensive knowledge. Christ is our wisdom. He is our wisdom not only in the sense that he tells us how to get to heaven. He is our wisdom. He is our wisdom. <clears throat> He is our wisdom, too, in teaching us true knowledge about everything concerning which we should have knowledge. End quote. As our priest, Jesus Christ is priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7, 1, 3. The priesthood of Melchizedek was, quote, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Hebrews 7, 3. In his person, Melchizedek had descent, parentage, and birth and death. His priesthood, however, coming directly from God, had none of the limitations of a hereditary priesthood or one of man's appointments. Moreover, this eternal priesthood of Melchizedek meant come by clearly get. Moreover, this eternal priesthood of Melchizedek combined in one person the priestly and royal offices. As our priest, Jesus Christ, didn't get the flow. As our priest, Jesus Christ made atonement for our sins and he reconciled us unto God. Man is reconciled to God by God himself through Christ. Of Christ's priestly office, Van Til points out, quote, Christ could not give us true knowledge of God and of the universe unless he died for us as priest. The question of knowledge is an ethical question at the root. It is indeed possible to have theoretically correct knowledge about God without loving God. The devil illustrates the... The devil illustrates this point. Yet, what is meant by knowing God in Scripture is knowing and loving God. This is true knowledge of God. The other is false. End quote. The Shorter Catechism, Answer 25, declares, quote, Christ executeth the office of a priest in his once offering up of himself a sacrifice to satisfy divine justice and reconciles us to God and in making continual intercession for us. End quote. In his intercessory work, Christ keeps us ever before the Father and delivers us from our adversaries. Hebrews 7.25 In answer 26, the Catechism gives an especially telling statement of Christ's kingship. Quote, Christ executeth the office of a king in subduing us to himself, in ruling and defending us, and in restraining and conquering all his and our enemies. End quote. The postmillennial character of the Westminster Standards is clearly in view here as elsewhere. As king, Christ conquers and subdues us and all his enemies and ours. His great victory was the conquest of sin and death by his atoning death and resurrection. We and all other men are as nothing in view of that victory, and our conquest is a small thing to Christ the King. By his conquest of us, Christ restores us to man's original calling to be priest, prophet, and king under God. As the second or last Adam, he is the head of the new humanity, which shall, in and through him, do that which the first Adam failed to do, to make this world the kingdom of God, wherein God's law and peace shall prevail. It is a grievous offence to regard Christ as an impotent king who must surrender the world to the devil and retreat to eternity in order to establish his realm. 
time and eternity are alike his Time and time and eternity. Time and eternity. Time and eternity. Time and eternity. Time and eternity are alike his domain. He governs both, and his purposes shall be everywhere manifested. Man in Christ is re established in Adam's calling. Unlike Adam, he has a battle to wage against the powers of darkness in the world and in himself. Unlike Adam, he has an eternal security in his calling and the certainty of perseverance unto victory in his Lord Jesus Christ, the greater Adam. I hope I'm comprehensible. Yep, bit of an 80s vibe for you there. Uh, thanks again for joining me in the booth, the booth of truth, the booth of truth without vermouth. <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, yeah, glad you could join me again. Thanks very much, and I hope to see you in the next chapter, chapter LXIV. Hope to see you soon. <laughs>